Okay, just to check everything, uh, let's start. Okay, we're going to go do on SOPs today. So this is actually a continuation from uh, assets and bases. So I believe everyone should be able to see my share screen. Okay, and should be able to hear me also. Huh? Okay, so today on SOPs, I just want to highlight that for Express, okay, and NA, the place where um, we're going to stop is slightly different. So I'll let you know where we're going to cut off at, okay? So let's start on the chapter of salts. So let's start off 11.1. .1. So take note, first thing, we're going to learn how to define the salts. So what exactly are salts? So all salts are actually ionic compounds, means that they all contain a cation and an anion. Okay? Now what are cation? Cations are positive ions, example Ca2+, Mg2+, K+, all these are cations because they are all positive ions. Okay, examples of anions. Example would be Cl minus, um, O2 minus. Okay, you can actually have so nitrate, NO3 minus, SO4 2 minus. All these are anions. Okay, so how can we get salt? Okay, how can we get salt? So in the previous uh, chapter, we actually went through is that salts can actually be made by this reaction. Acid plus metal, acid plus carbonate, acid plus base. So just a recap, bases are actually your metal oxides or metal hydroxides. Let me zoom in a little bit. Alkalis, okay, they are more specific. They are sort of like your soluble metal hydroxides. Right, maybe you shouldn't use the word soluble metal hydroxides. They are actually your soluble bases. Okay, each of these reactions will give you different products that we have gone through. So acid plus metal gives you salt plus hydrogen gas. Acid plus carbonate gives you salt plus water plus carbon dioxide gas. Acid plus base gives you salt plus water. Acid plus alkali also gives you salt plus water. Okay, so um, do take note during the reaction, one or more hydrogen ions of the acid is replaced by the metallic ion or an ammonium ion. So what do they mean by that? For example, if you look at hydrochloric acid, it's HCl. After you react it with alkali, sodium hydroxide, what you realize is that the Cl is now tacked to the metallic ion, which is K. The H is replaced. So that's why what you get is KCl. Right, the H hydrogen ion is replaced by the metallic ion. And we also mentioned in the last lesson, the anion of a salt usually comes from an acid. So what are they? Okay, now, so it's actually mentioned here, zinc chloride. Okay, so if you use hydrochloric acid, you actually get your chloride. Use nitric acid, you get nitrate. Use sulfuric acid, you get sulfate. Okay, so the salts, the name of the salt, the back part is always formed by your acid. The front part really depends on what is the metal or what is the um, um what is the metal, the carbonate, okay, whatever that you're reacting it with. Okay, so this part here, do take note. Hydrochloric acid gives you chloride, nitric acid gives you nitrate, sulfuric acid gives you sulfate. Okay, so next, uh, many salts combine water to form crystals. These mole water molecules are known as water of crystallization. Okay, now, this water of crystallization part is not so important, uh, not really so important for any site. So I won't go through uh, all this in details. All this formula, actually, you don't need to remember. Huh? Okay, it's just know that all this dot 5H2O, dot 7H2O, dot 10, dot 7 over here, all of these are known as your water of crystallization. Okay. If you remove them, they become like this, right? They become like this, right? When you remove all this water of crystallization, they become like this. Over here, we call them the anhydrous salt. Anhydrous actually just means without water. Okay. So as I mentioned, this water of crystallization, do take note, uh, don't need to really pay too much attention to it. Nah. 
Okay, next. Soluble and soluble salt. So we, we went through that salts are ionic compounds. Okay, they will definitely be made out of one cation. Okay, so salt will always be formed by one cation, one anion. Okay, now, next thing we know that the salts can be formed from acid reaction. Acid reaction. Okay, so the last part we're going to go through here is really about the solubility of the salt. Okay, now, uh, although salts are ionic compounds, but not all salts are soluble in water. So do take note, uh, not all salts are soluble in water. So what you realize is this. Okay, all sodium, potassium, ammonium, nitrate, chlorides, and sulfate salts are soluble except for this five. So in your syllabus, you just remember there are only five, really five main insoluble salts. Five main insoluble salts. Okay, really in your syllabus, there are only five main insoluble salts. What are they? Okay, take note. The first one we look at in terms of the chlorides. We have two of them. Silver chloride, lead to chloride. In terms of the uh, next one, we actually have sulfates. Sulfates, we have three of them. So silver chloride, lead to chloride, are the two chlorides that's insoluble in water. That's why we term them as insoluble salts. Okay, the three sulfates are barium sulfate, lead to sulfate, and calcium sulfate. These are the three sulfates that are insoluble in water. Okay, now the solubility of salt is important when we are considering preparation of salt. Okay, so when whether the salt are soluble or insoluble, okay, it's really quite important when you're considering how we can prepare the salt or make the salt. Okay, so put a star over here. You need to remember this five. Okay, they will be really, really, really important. Okay, so just a summary of what we have gone through. So we said the salt is an ionic compound formed when a metallic ion by an ammonium ion displaces, replaces one of the hydrogen ions from an acid. So, okay, ionic compounds made of cation and ion, when uh, it is formed, Okay, in terms of the acid reaction. So this one here just tells you it's like acid reaction. Huh? Hydrated salt contain water of crystallization while anhydrous salt does not contain water of crystallization. This part I mentioned, don't need to worry too much about it. Okay, mainly important if uh, when we are focusing on separation technique. Okay. Uh, this part here is about salt solubility whether salt is able to dissolve in water or not, salt solubility. So all sodium salt, potassium salts, ammonium salts. So these three types of salt, I call them the spa salts. Why spa? Because S for sodium, P for potassium, A for ammonium. Okay, you can add in nitrates, so you can call them the spent salts. So all these salts, as long as you see the word sodium inside the salt, potassium, ammonium, or nitrate, all of these salts are definitely soluble. So example, if you see sodium um, chloride, okay, because of the word sodium, you know this is confirmed soluble. Yeah, I'll give you another one, example, potassium. Okay, let's give one chimana, potassium phosphate. Now, is this soluble in water? Confirmed, yes, because of the word potassium. The right, next one, I give you an example, lead to nitrate. Is lead to nitrate soluble in water? Yes, confirm can because of the nitrate term. So that's what I mean by spent salt. As long as it is any one of these four, the salt is confirmed soluble. Okay. What are the insoluble salts? We have the chlorides of silver and lead. So remember, I told you chloride got two, sulfate got three. So silver chloride, lead two chloride, sulfate got barium sulfate, lead two sulfate, and calcium sulfate. Now, do take note, this one I didn't really go through. Okay, just take note, all carbonates are insoluble. Are insoluble. Except for SPA. What do you realize? SPA is actually part of your spend. So actually, in fact, all carbonates are insoluble. Except for this three, because they are your spa type of carbonates. Okay, 
spa is without nitrate. Huh? Okay, the, whenever I say the word spa, it just means that I don't include nitrate, just sodium, potassium, and ammonia. Okay, so just a quick recap, what are the five salts that are insoluble? Huh? Okay, so we're going to 11.2 already, but we should always remember this. So what are the insoluble salts? We have the first one, okay, which is chloride times two. What are the two chlorides? First is silver chloride. Second one is lead two chloride. Next, we have sulfates. There are three sulfates that are insoluble. What are the three sulfates? We got bar uh, barium sulfate, lead two sulfate, Okay, and the last one, we have calcium sulfate. So these are the five salts that are insoluble in water. And of course, the last one, we have all carbonates are insoluble. Okay, so insoluble salts, actually we have all carbonates except, okay, the SPA carbonate. Okay, so do take note of this. Right, these are all our insoluble salts. Now, let's look at this. Before we go into this table over here, okay, let's read through. Huh? Okay, how can we prepare salts in the lab? So there are several ways to mix salts. But before deciding, there are two factors which must be considered. First, is the salt to be prepared soluble in water? Now, that's why this whole segment here is very important because the first question you ask you need to know whether the salt is soluble or insoluble or not. The second part is, are the starting materials soluble in water? Okay, this second question here is the one that's a little bit tricky. Okay, we'll go through it a little bit more later. Huh? So typically, if the salt is soluble, we usually prepare from reaction with acids. So it will be acids plus something. If it is insoluble, we normally will use this method called the precipitation method. So what are the methods that we have again? We got reaction with acids, okay, depending on what uh, the salt we're preparing. And the other one is precipitation. Okay, so let's zoom into it. So method for preparing a salt is a salt to be prepared soluble in water. So actually just asking you the salt is soluble in water. So if the salt is not soluble in water, you straight away will use this idea of precipitation method. Okay? So what the, in precipitation, actually, they will have solution containing cation and another solution containing the anion salt. So actually, we are using two solutions okay, to react together. One of the solution must contain the cation, the other solution must contain the anion. Okay, so that is the first method. Okay, although they put here the method. Huh? Okay, now, what if the salt is soluble in water? Okay, so if the salt is soluble in water, we'll look at the reaction of an acid with MC and B. Okay, MCB. Reaction of acid with MCB. Now, the interesting thing is this. You realize the second question I asked, are both starting materials soluble in water? How do you know whether the starting materials are soluble in water? Do take note, okay, you just need to look at whether the salt is a spa salt. If the, if the salt is a spa salt, you will use the titration method. If the salt is not a spa salt, you will use reaction of acid with an insoluble MCB. Okay, don't use the word substance, just use reaction of acid with an insoluble MCB. What exactly MCB is actually here, metal, carbonate, base. Okay, I read order it as MCB. Now, the summary of the methods actually are listed below here. So before I go into all the details, right, actually there's the, the steps are actually very simple. It's actually over here. So let's start from method three first. Huh? Before I go into all the details, let's do a summary of the method first. So for precipitation method, the first step actually is to mix the two solutions together. So depending on what solutions uh, you have determined it to be, so you just mix the two solution, you filter the solution, 
you actually will get your salt crystals. Now, before you even get your salt crystals, right? Okay, do take note, there's always one additional step that uh that you must always have. Huh? So I put here uh die die must have step huh? die die must have step. So what exactly is this die die must have step? Huh? So you realize actually every time you always filter, okay, to get the salt crystal. After you filter, there's always two steps that you must always have. The first part of this die die must have step is actually to um let's not use wash uh, actually is to rinse with distilled water okay rinse the salt with distilled water and then the second step is to dry with filter paper so these are the two dye dye must have steps so whatever method you use after you filter at the end you must always include rinse with distilled water dry with filter paper okay so please take note of this uh. now so for Precipitation method actually very simple. It's just mix, filter, okay? Filter the mixture to get the residue. Okay, the residue is actually the salt crystals, huh? the salt. Okay, then after you rinse with distilled water, dry filter paper. So the precipitation method, actually only a one, two, plus another two more steps, four steps only. Okay, now, Method two is a little bit uh, trickier. Okay, what's the method two? Method two, actually, the first step is actually to do what we call a titration method. So titration, later on we'll see a diagram, is actually to react your acid with a soluble base or soluble carbonate. After reaction, okay, you actually have to uh, repeat the experiment and stuff like that. Once you've done, fully, fully done with titration, actually you crystallize the filtrate, then you filter. Now, we don't re really affect crystallize the filtrate. Normally, we will say hit the solution to a point of saturation. Right? When we talk about crystallization, huh, we'll normally write hit the solution to a point of saturation. Step B, cool the saturated solution. for the salt crystals to form. So whenever you talk about crystallization, please don't just write crystallization. Make sure you have a hit the solution to a point of saturation. Then after that, cool the saturated solution uh, for the salt crystals to form. So that's under crystallization. Once you got the salt crystals, you filter. Once you filter to contain the salt crystals, you rinse with distilled water, you dry with filter paper. So that is the titration process. Last one, okay, is this method one over here. Reaction of acid with an insoluble MCB. Now, I just want us to add one more word here. With an excess insoluble MCB. Okay, because the word excess actually is included here. So instead of having it here, why not just put it right at the very start? Okay, so an ugly circling. Huh? Okay, have it right at the very start. Okay, now, so what you're doing here is actually you are reacting the acid with excess solid. It can be an excess metal, excess base, or excess carbonate, but you're making, just adding a lot of um, solid into it. Okay, once you're done with that, you filter the mixture to collect the filtrate. So this one is one step. After that, you crystallize. Take note, crystallize, you must always have the two steps here, heat the solution to point of saturation cool the thing so crystallize take note must expand must have two steps then the last one you filter to obtain the salt crystals which then after you filter you must rinse with distilled water and dry with filter paper so these are the steps okay these are the steps here right now let's go more into detail huh? so method one okay the salt is soluble Okay, you are reacting your acid with a metal, with an excess metal, insoluble base or insoluble carbon. So as, uh, this is actually the three reactions here. You realize you can get your salt, huh? depending on uh, which one you use, you die, die still get your salt. 
So they say in this method, the metal base and carbonate must be in excess. The reason is really because so that all the acids use up. Now, why is it so? If you don't use up all the acid, the salt produced will be contaminated with the acid. So it's very, very important to make sure that your acid is all used up. And for this to happen, you must add excess metal, base, or carbonate. Okay, so by adding excess carbonate, metal, or base, you will actually make sure that all the acid is used up. Okay? Secondly, you must make sure that the metal, base, and carbonate must be insoluble in water. All these actually be included here already. So, can you see excess, insoluble, insoluble, MCB. So, method one, if you ask me, instead of writing it like that, I will normally tend to tell my class it's actually a reaction of acid with excess, insoluble, MCB. This is the method over here. Okay, now, so they give you an example of how to go about doing it. So first step, how can, we, how can we prepare zinc sulfate? Now the question is, how do you know zinc sulfate is using this method? How do you know zinc sulfate is using method one? So let's go back to the flow chart. So we ask ourselves, first thing, when we're up here, so method for preparing salt, is zinc sulfate to be prepared soluble in water? Now, we only got five insoluble salts. Sulfates only got barium sulfate, lead 2 sulfate, calcium sulfate that is insoluble. So zinc sulfate must definitely be soluble. So we are down here. So this is for zinc sulfate. Huh? So next thing, are, the, are both the starting materials soluble in water? Now, take note, to know whether they are starting with whether starting soluble starting materials are soluble in water, actually ask yourself: is a salt a spar salt? Zinc is not sodium, zinc is not potassium, zinc is not ammonium. Okay, it's not a spar salt. As such, we will be using the reaction of acid with an excess insoluble MCB. So this is the flow, right? This is the flow to understand which method to use. You must ask yourself the question that's included here. You don't ask the question, you wouldn't know what method. You don't know what method, you wouldn't know what to write. Okay? So, zinc sulfate is actually not straight away like, you know, they put here very easy. Yeah? You must actually first part go through the flow diagram. Once you know the flow diagram, okay, you can start here already. So take note, use the solubility rule to determine whether the salt is soluble in water. So we know zinc sulfate is soluble in water, as I mentioned just now. As such, we will be um, looking at uh, not precipitation. So because soluble in water, we know cannot use the precipitation method. So no to the precipitation method. Next, identify the possible method and starting material because zinc sulfate is soluble in water. We can prepare it by reacting acid with metal, base, or carbonate. So when we look at here, we know zinc, we know sulfate. Sulfate definitely will come from sulfuric acid. Now, zinc, so I can either have it zinc metal, zinc oxide, or zinc carbonate. So are the starting materials all soluble? Sulfuric acid, soluble. That's what all means soluble, huh? Zinc oxide, zinc carbonate, zinc, all these are insoluble. So because of this, we know we're going to use method one. So we can either use this, this, or this. We can use this sulfuric acid plus zinc, or sulfuric acid plus zinc oxide, or zinc, sulfuric acid plus zinc carbonate. Now, my proposal, okay, I'll say that every time, if you ever need to use this method, my suggestion is always to use the carbonate method. Okay, now, why the carbonate method? Because carbonate definitely can react on. Okay, and carbonate, I think you're more familiar with it also. Okay, now select the starting materials to prepare a salt. So, in this case here, the, the question itself used zinc, huh? so we will go with zinc. But otherwise, I'll tend to recommend the carbonate one. Okay, so in this example, they know that zinc plus sulfuric acid is going to give me zinc sulfate plus hydrogen. So I will take the acid mixed with excess zinc. 
So how does it look? So first thing, okay, all these procedures, there is just very detailed. Okay, I'll later show you a summary of the whole thing. But the first step actually is to add zinc powder into your dilute sulfuric acid. Add a lot of it, a lot, lot, add excess. Okay. Once you have excess, it actually means that your when you add, you'll see one whole lump here. Okay, once you add finish, uh, once you add and you cannot react anymore, this lump here will be your excess zinc metal. This thing now is no longer sulfuric acid. It's actually now your zinc sulfate solution. So once we are at this stage here, okay, let me change to a nicer color, uh, blue. Okay, once we're at this stage, then we will go and filter. So when you filter, you realize the excess zinc will be stuck here. The zinc sulfate solution will be at the bottom. As such, once we manage to filter it already, we will keep the filtrate until it's saturated. Then we will allow the solution to cool so that the salt crystals can form. Step three and step four is exactly the crystallization process. Okay. Now, once you have crystallized, you will filter to collect the crystals. Then you will rinse the crystal and then you will dry the crystal. Okay, so this is the uh, method. Okay, method one of um, reaction of acid with excess insoluble MCB. Okay, next. Why is this method not suitable for some metals? Okay, that's why I recommend to use carbonate. Uh, it's really because sometimes metals cannot react with it. Example, you wouldn't dare to use sodium, uh, potassium, sodium, and calcium because once you throw it in, there's a violent reaction. The reaction is very dangerous. So that's why we wouldn't use uh, this method to prepare my spa salts. Okay, in addition, okay, some metals are also unreactive. Sorry, I'll put the shampoo cross and shampoo star here. Sometimes the metals are unreactive. For example, copper and silver, these two metals are definitely unreactive. Okay, so because it's either too reactive or unreactive, we should not use the metal to react the acid. Instead, we should either use the insoluble base or carbonate instead. Okay, so just take note. Okay, so that's for uh, method one. Now, this is just a further elaboration of what if it's a base and if it's a carbonate. So all the steps are all here. Do read through on your own. I won't go through them because it's very similar to the steps on top. Okay, now, second method, method two, titration method. Okay, the titration method, generally, we will be looking at acid plus alkaline. Seldom in your syllabus, you will see the soluble carbonates coming out. Okay, mainly you will see more for pure or for combined when they want to really test their understanding of the chapter of salts. Okay, now do take note, in this method, all the starting materials used are soluble. Okay, all the starting materials used are soluble. So, because they are all soluble, we can't add things in excess uh, because once it's in excess, we cannot remove from the salt solution. Okay, because once you throw in, you go down and get any solid, it will just straight away dissolve. Okay, therefore, it is concluded, okay, based on all the theories and stuff, they realize that for titration method, we will always focus on this tree, the spa salts. Okay, this spa salts will be prepared using the titration method. So first part, okay, let's use sodium nitrate uh, as an example. So sodium nitrate is a soluble in water because it is a S-P-A-N. S salt plus some more is an N salt. So confirm soluble. Next, identify the possible starting materials. So nitrate. So therefore we know we need to use nitric acid. Sodium can either be sodium metal, sodium hydroxide or sodium carbonate. Now sodium metal is highly reactive. That's why we won't use it. Sodium carbonate, sodium hydroxide, these two are actually soluble in water. Okay, these two are actually soluble in water. So we realize that A, the starting material is soluble. Nitric acid also soluble. Therefore, because of this, okay, we're gonna use 
um, the titration method. Okay, so possible starting materials, you can use nitric acid plus sodium hydroxide. This one, you should be more familiar with it. The other way is you can use nitric acid plus sodium carbonate. Okay, but let's focus on the sodium hydroxide one. Sodium hydroxide is one. Huh? So in this example, we're going to use dilute nitric acid to react with sodium hydroxide to give you sodium nitrate. Okay, so as I mentioned, nitric acid gives you the nitrate part. The sodium hydroxide actually gives you the sodium part of it. This is the chemical reaction. Okay, I will go through it. Now, let's look at the steps. Okay, you can see here the titration process it actually uses the burette. Okay. And then you have a conical flask with this thing called a metal orange. Metal orange is actually an indicator. Okay, what does this indicator do? Because it's an acid alkali or acid base reaction, the indicator actually helps indicate when the reaction uh, has fully completed. Okay, so you don't want to have too much uh, of any one of the substance. So you want to make sure that you want it tun tun, uh, everything react finish. So therefore, we have this titration method and we're going to use the indicator to help us to determine it. So first thing, we're going to do this thing called a titration. So what they do is, they will first uh, do a titration to determine the volumes of reactant required. Next, they'll prepare a pure sample of sodium nitrate to go and do some crystallization. So there's two, you need to do the titration actually two times. So first step is to do the titration to find the volumes, okay, that's required. So you fill the burette with the acid, okay, just fill up all the way, okay. Next, you pipette 25 cm cube. So it's very precise here. The sodium hydroxide, only 25.0 cm cube. No less, no more. Next, you add the indicator, which is the metal orange. The solution will turn yellow. So the color will actually help us to know when the reaction has ended. So what we're going to do, we're going to add okay, the nitric acid in, drop by drop, slowly, until the solution just turns orange permanently. Okay, the one drop that caused the solution to turn orange, we know that that's the volume required to neutralize the sodium hydroxide. So we call this the end point. And we call this the end point. Right? So why are we doing all this is because we want to find the volume of acid required for complete neutralization of 25.0 cm cube of sodium hydroxide right? in this particular reaction. So for example, okay, imagine V2 minus V1 is actually equal to 20.5 cm cube. So what I know is this based on my first reaction, 20.5 cm cube of HNO3, which is a nitric acid, will react completely with 25.0 cm cube of an AOH. When I say react completely, it just means really there's no more sodium hydroxide left. Huh? Okay, now, once I've determined this, I'm gonna throw every I'm gonna chuck the solution here away. Okay, why do I don't want to use this solution? It's really because it's contaminated with the indicator. So I'm going to do a fresh set again. So this step here now, second step here, I'm going to prepare 25.0 cm cube again. But this time, instead of adding indicator, I don't add anymore. I just straight away put 20.5 cm cube of nitric acid in because I know based on the top, like based on what I've done at the top, 20.5 will react with 25.0. So the initial reading here from step one to step five when I do a titration is really to find out the exact amount of acid that will react with 25 cm cube of sodium hydroxide. Once I've done this, okay, I repeat the step, except I use the exact amount that I found out just now. Okay, once I've added in, right, the interesting thing is if I add 25.0 cm cube of sodium hydroxide, with 20.5 dilute nitric acid. Okay, once you add everything in, 
actually there will be no more sodium hydroxide, no more nitric acid. Inside here will just be my sodium nitrate solution. Only sodium nitrate. Okay? No traces of sodium hydroxide, no traces of dilute nitric acid. Once I've done that, okay, you can see I've got my solution, right? The next step actually is to heat until saturated. Three is to allow the saturation to cool so that the salt crystal can form. This one, as mentioned, is your crystallization method. Last one, filter the crystals, wash it with a little cold water, and then dry it. So the wash and dry or rinse with distilled water and dry is always definitely included. So just take note of that. Okay, so this is your titration method. Oh no, I realized my precipitation, the word's very ugly, because never scan properly. There you Okay. Uh, never mind. Uh, let's, whatever we can see, we see. Uh, okay. So pre precipitation involves mixing two solution. This is mixing two solution. Okay. To form an insoluble solid. So you mix, you will straight get your insoluble solid already. Okay. Now, to precipitate an insoluble substance, AY. Okay. So for example, if I want AY, Okay, the insoluble salt is AY, right? I'll put A with B. Okay, I'll find a substance with AB. I'll, start, start, I'll find a substance XY. So you realize the A is from something else, the Y is from something else. When I put them together, I can get my AY salt. Okay, we'll see further in details later on. Huh? Okay. Now, do take note, this method is really used to prepare insoluble salt. Since we, after we mix, actually the salt can be separated by filtration. So this is a very simple, very fast free step to do. Okay, so how can we prepare barium sulfate? Barium sulfate is actually an insoluble salt. Huh? It is one of the three sulfates that is insoluble. So once we know, okay, with solubility, we know barium sulfate is insoluble, thick, we know definitely we must use precipitation method. Huh? Okay, so we use precipitation method. So what can we do? Okay, so barium sulfate, the sulfate, we actually can make it into sulfuric acid. Because sulfuric acid is a soluble sulfate. Actually, what's another uh, sulfate, another few sulfates that we can use? We can actually use um, sodium sulfate. We can use potassium sulfate. You can actually use also ammonium sulfate. Okay, any one of these three sulfates will also work. Okay, so generally, when you want to use precipitation method, okay, you can either use the acid or you can use the spa sulfates or the spa, spa salts. Okay. Next, barium. Now, do take note, um, we will recommend that the metal one, you always tag it with the nitrate. Okay, the metal one, you always tag it with the nitrate. So barium sulfate, the sulfate will use the acid. The barium one, we will use barium nitrate. Okay, later on we'll go through a little bit more examples. Huh? So the reaction will actually look like this. You got barium nitrate added with sodium, nit sodium sulfate. Or we can actually use H2SO4, sulfuric acid, and you will get your barium sulfate. You realize it is a solid, while the rest are actually still aqueous, which are solutions. So how does that ex experiment actually look? It's actually very, very simple. You first have your barium sulfate solution over here, barium nitrate solution over here. You add sodium sulfate in. So literally just mix and then you stir. Stir until no more precipitate form. After that, you filter. This is the barium sulfate that we want. Okay, so we'll pour through. Okay, once you get the barium sulfate as a solid over here, we will rinse with distilled water. And then we will dry on the filter paper. So very, very simple for precipitation method. Okay, now, so this is the end for the salt preparation. 11.3 is actually not covered in your syllabus. Huh? It's only covered in the express syllabus. Okay, so you don't need to go into details for 11.3. Huh? You actually don't even need to cover this. Huh? Okay, so actually we can stop here already. Okay, we can stop here already. Now, so just to wrap up for today, 
Okay, most of you are thinking, cha, cha, cha. Okay, down here got all the steps. Very good, very good. Like, do you have a simpler way of writing it to help us to remember? Okay, the, so first part here, okay, I want to say, uh, okay, this table of insoluble salt, please go and remember them. Second thing you must remember is this flow chart over here. You must remember this. Now, the third one I'm going to write for you now is actually the, the steps that simplified. So first one, I'm going to write the summarized step, uh, reaction of acid. So method one. Reaction of acid plus excess insoluble MCB. Okay. So step one, okay. Uh, determine the reagents or the reactants used okay, sorry, uh, spell wrong, yeah. reactants to be used to make the salt. Okay? So how to do that is really by looking at the name. So for this one here, Take note, uh, salt always got two parts, the cation part and the anion part. Okay, the anion part will always okay, form the acid. The cation part will always form the MCB, metal, carbonate, or base. Okay, take note, I'll put a star at the carbonate because I'll recommend if you are free to choose, Choose the carbonate option. Now, once you are done with that, okay, then really the next step, okay, is to mix excess insoluble MC or BR, depending on which one you choose. Uh, do take note, this one I put here in the square box because you cannot put MCBR, you must say what metal or what carbonate or what base you use, okay, in acid. So those that I put in box, you must replace it on your own. Okay. Now once you have mixed it, okay, you will filter the mixture and obtain the filtrate. The filtrate is actually your salt solution. Once you have filtered it, step four, okay, hit the solution. Hit the solution to point of saturation. And fifth step, allow the saturated solution to cool. for the salt crystals to form. Step six, okay. Filter the mixture to obtain the salt crystals. I will obtain the residue, which is actually the salt crystals. Then step seven, rinse with distilled water. I rinse with some distilled water, not too much, otherwise your crystals will dissolve. And then step eight is to dry with filter paper. Okay, so this is the very generic steps, okay, for your first method, which is acid plus excess insoluble MCB. Okay, some of you people cannot understand us, or insoluble. MCBR. Okay, so method two, titration. Okay, method two, titration. Let me, let me get consistent. Uh. Should I write two here? Should put method two. Titration method. Okay, for titration method, what's going to be the first step? The first step is always to determine the reactants or reagents to be used. 
okay, for to get the salt. Okay, so what? How to determine? So once again, your salt you always have your cation and your anion. Now, because it is a titration method, the anion they will actually be your acid. The cation typically will be your soluble hydrox. Soluble okay, will be alkali. Huh? Okay, let's keep it simple. We're just going to put alkali. Okay, so one example alkali is actually your something hydroxide. Okay, so alkali is actually just your something hydroxide. So that will be your uh, step one to determine what you're going to use. Second step, titrate. Okay, titrate. The acid, okay, what acid it is, and the alkali with, okay, now I'm going to write the specific indicator with methyl orange. So methyl orange is actually an indicator. So we just write methyl orange every time. Huh? So titrate acid and the alkali, titrate the acid and the alkali with methyl orange to determine the volume. Okay, actually, I normally will write this uh, end point volume. End point volume for neutralization. So this is step two. Okay, this is a bit long, a bit lengthy, but um, once you write this, actually you cut short a lot of things already. Okay, so once you titrate, third step, Okay, uh, repeat the titration without indicator, but using the endpoint volume. Okay, so do the first time with metal orange to find out what is the endpoint volume. Once you know what is the endpoint volume, you repeat the thing, but now this time without indicator, okay? And using the endpoint volume. Should I use but nah? And using the endpoint volume. Now, once you're done at, at this step here, okay, the rest of it actually is quite easy already. Okay, fourth step actually is heat. Okay, so actually once you get here, you uh, repeat the attrition without, okay, to get, so yeah, let me scroll down here. We get the salt solution. Okay, so actually once you do step three, you got your salt solution. Maybe. Okay, step four, hit the solution to point of saturation. Hit the solution to point of saturation. Step five, you cool the solution. For salt crystals, uh, for crystallization, for salt crystals to form. Step six, sorry, huh? step six. Okay, filter. Are you? Why am I think getting worse? Huh? I filter the mixture to obtain. the salt crystals, which is actually your residue. Step seven, rinse the salt crystals with some distilled water. And step eight, okay, it is to dry with filter paper. Okay, so this one is the end for titration already. Okay, end for titration. Now we're going to go on to the last one, which is actually your final step, which is on your precipitation. So method three, okay, method three is your precipitation method. Okay. Now, for precipitation method is actually uh, quite fast already. So first step, once again, 
you determine so let me scroll up here. So precipitation method, you determine the reactants. Okay, reactants to use to get the salt. So typically, once again, you always got your cation or and your anion for your salt. The anion, okay, so yeah, let's use a different color. The anion can be your acid. Okay, it can also be your spa. Okay, spa, whatever anion that is. So if it's a chloride, you can use sodium chloride, potassium chloride, or ammonium chloride. If it's a sulfate, sodium sulfate, potassium sulfate, or ammonium sulfate. For the cation, okay, we will recommend you put the cation with a nitrate. Okay, it should be nitrates. So yeah. Okay, so whenever you do precipitation method, take note the anion is can be converted to acid or to a spa salt. The cation is always converted to something nitrate. Okay. Now once you have determined it, the next step is to mix the two reactants together. Now once you have mixed them together, okay, step three, filter. The mixture to get the residue. Okay, the residue here is actually your salt precipitate. Huh? Step four, rinse with some distilled water. And then step five is to dry with filter paper. Okay, so I've gone through all the steps and etc. Um, quite in detail already. Okay, I even gave you like sort of like the generic copy and paste um uh, steps that you can use. Huh? now I just want to wrap up for today. Really, if you look at all the three methods here, then okay, you, you will realize that hey, sure, method one, method two, how come the left, the right hand side looks exactly the same? Huh? it is uh. Okay, I say again, huh? if you look at method one, look at method two, the right hand side is exactly the same. So Method one and two, once you get the salt crystals, you are always actually doing the same thing, okay? But for precipitation method, you realize uh, it is not exactly same as method one and method two. But precipitation method is a lot simpler, a lot fewer steps to remember to write. Okay, so that's all for today. Let me end this session by stopping this recording first. Huh?